Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Another beautiful day to be out here. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Thank you so much. A little hard to hear back there. How about now? A little bit better? Excellent. I use my outdoor voice. How about that? I'll let you guys settle in for a little bit here as we continue our worship and our liturgy this morning. Again, thanks to for everyone who helped with LaJean's funeral uh, yesterday. It was a wonderful uh, opportunity for this community to come together and to celebrate uh, someone who has been such an important part of this community. So thank you for all that made that happen yesterday. Let us receive this call to worship. Please stand as you are able. See what love has been given to us that we should be called children of God. By this we know love, that Jesus Christ has come to us and lived and gave this life that God might love be known among us. Therefore, beloved, let us not love only in word or in speech, but in deed and in truth. Because we love one another, we know that we have been moved from death into life. This is God's presence that overwhelms the powers of this world. With this, we worship in spirit and truth through Jesus, our risen Christ. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you made uh, make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsty earth, like streams of revive our souls, like cups of cold water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us, send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, 
shower us with life. To you be all praise and with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love that you, for you, that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We are still looking for um, donations for our kits. You can see behind us, we've moved it from that side to that side to attach it to our, our um, mailbox over there. Please find ways to give all those needed there as well. And we're looking for any graduates. Please suggest your uh, sons, daughters, granddaughters, anybody to be able to be, uh, be a part of this process to give out our um, our. Um, our scholarships there and also my installation next week the bishop will be joining us for the beginning of the service we are going to be rolling out a familiar liturgy to this congregation from hymn book 1991 the haugen liturgy something in which we this congregation is uh, will remember from years past uh, also one of my favorites by the way so it would be good to be getting some extra some of those reminders for us as well. And so please come and celebrate together uh, the official installation there. Am I missing of anything on importance for right now? All right. Good morning. The psalm this morning is Psalm 98. We'll read it responsibly. Thank you. Sing a new song to the Lord, who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all your lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with a harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and all those who dwell within it. Let the rivers clap their hands, and, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord, who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The first reading is from 1 John chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. But this we know, that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by the water and blood, Jesus Christ, not the water, but only the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. <laughs>
Gospels from John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you will love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask of him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I know for the Bible tells me so little ones to him belong they are weak but he is strong yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gates to open wide. Thank you, Patrick. Well, good morning, everyone. This is just one of those passages that's just delicious, full, so encompassing, so full and encompassing that there just doesn't seem to be one sermon that could do it justice. No song can really hold it. So today I'm going to just weave a couple parts of this passages together and take a couple parts apart. There's two things of this passage that I'd like to understand together as key understandings to this passage. Wonder with me for a second. 
Whenever you see the word if in this passage, think when. And whenever you hear the word may, think of God saying will. So one of the issues with translation from English to Greek is that the English language is more expansive and expressive than the Greek language in the time. The same word that gets translated as if can also be when. And the same word that is translated as may is also translated as will. And over the years, as, as the Bible gets translated into the modern language, translators in the time desire to understand the original context and put it into our ears. But the problem is, is modern day iffy people understand the word if as probably not. And modern day ears, when they hear the word may, also hear probably not. Like we hear it as some, we often use the word if as an experience of accusation. Uh, Jim, if only you would listen to me, I would be not mad. <laughs> oh, did I strike a nerve? Yeah. Right? We, we hear these words may and if as some form of accusation, in some form of like, and, and when we hear them, we just believe in our hearts that it just won't happen. It's like the word maybe. Maybe usually means no, probably not. But in today's passage, the if is not if, it's more like when. There's a promise. There's a hope. There's an understanding that there is not that if it's going to happen, but maybe it's not happening right now, but it will. Or when it will happen. When you do this, God's kingdom breaks in. It's a hard experience to understand the scriptures if we think of them as just kind of a 50-50 proposition. And somehow this is just some kind of negotiation between God and us. That if we are good, then good things will happen. Or may the Lord bless us and keep us. Well, no, will the Lord bless us and keep us. It's a different understanding of the provocative word of Christ, that this living word of Jesus Christ is here to transform us. And in the context of this passage, it's important to see that if as when, because in all the other propositions, God through Jesus Christ is saying, I am doing these things. I am making you my friend. I am making the choice on you. You are mine because I am making the choice. And there doesn't seem to be any if, ands, or buts about it. God is making this relationship for us. God calls us friend. God keeps God's commandment. God keeps God's hope. And God keeps God's promises on us and in us. The only if part, the only may part, is if we do it for our neighbor. And this part of this passage about joy, that somehow the joy of God is just not complete, right? That God gives God's joy to us so that it will be completed by us. We are somehow this completing factor for God. In us, God is completing joy. In us, God is completing joy for our neighbor, for this creation, for this world. We are this completing factor. 
Because in God, when we do these things, when we live into the commandment, God will contain and can will continue God's covenant with creation and with us. But if and when we do it for our neighbors, joy is completed. Christ's work is completed. Christ's hope is completed. So, when we, when we work against racism, say it with me, the joy is completed. Let's say that. The joy is completed. When we work against racism and its grips on our law enforcement in our community, God's joy is Amen. And the joy is complete when sexism loses its seats at many parts of power. God's joy is? Amen. And the joy is complete when we see our young people, not as some kind of incomplete human in need of finishing, but as a child of God in need of acceptance and grace. God's joy is? Our joy is complete when our concerns about who loves who melt away to just spreading more love. God's joy is people of God. As God in Christ has made salvation complete for you and for me, as God's call on us through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the death and resurrection, our forever future with God is completed. But it's our job for our neighbor, for this world, for this creation. It's our job to complete that joy's circuit. To have a world in complete joy. It is our job to have a world that does not sacrifice one person's joy for another person's liberty and joy. It's our job to complete that circuit. To make that joy that we feel so evident from God's grace to not stop with us but go from us to our neighbors. So let us be, let us be in such joy that we work for the joy of everyone. A year, a few years ago, I wrote a little hymn that goes along with this song I'm going to teach you the chorus here for the end of our time together in this word. May our joy be complete. May our ears and eyes now see the love revealed in me, declared in mystery. May our hearts now be touched. May your word of life now come and fellowship with us. And fellowship with us. Try to sing along with me. May our joy be complete. May our ears and eyes now see the love you feel in me declared in mystery may our hearts now be touched may your word of life now come and fellowship with us and fellowship with us abide in me and keep my heart in you 
While I weep, command my heart, don't keep us apart. Love is our place to start, everybody. May our joy be complete, may our ears and eyes now see your love revealed in me declared in mystery may our hearts now be touched may your word of life now come and fellowship with us and fellowship with us amen Please stand as you are able for our hymn of the day. Whenever you're ready, Jay. Let us confess our faith we find in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving God, you call us to be your fruit-bearing church. Strengthen the bonds among all people. Will this church, O oh God, in your hope, and help us anticipate the glory of your resurrection to come. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, the earth praises you. The seas roar and the hills sing for joy. Fill the earth with your love. 
so that by their song, all creation of land and sea and sky, barring, boring and soaring, may call us to join with them in praise. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. O faithful Savior, you subdue the world, not with weapons, but with your undying love. Plant your word in the hearts of the nation's leaders and give them your spirit so that the peoples of this world may live in peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Caring healer, you, you, you forget no one and accompany the lowly. Be present with those who are sick and suffering, especially those on our prayer list. Provide for those needing homes or medical care and point us towards life-changing responses to those in need in our own communities and beyond. Be with those who mourn the death of Eugene Hetrick. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, as a, as a mother comforts her child, you comfort us. Bless mothers and mothering people in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers, mothers who grieve, those who grieve because they can't be with their mothers, and those who have never known their loving mother. Hear us, O oh God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise these prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. In the night in which we were betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all the drinks, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. Remember, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the joy are yours now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Wellspring of joy. Through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts, satisfying the hunger still around us and sending us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.
May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. Oh, wrong part. I'm back here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.